Are you out here looking for some solid content to play in October? Well, PS Plus Extra has got you covered. Hey everybody, I'm Little Bobby here with 5.9 Gaming Direct. And today we're gonna go over the titles coming with PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium for October, 2022. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the news, reviews, and other content we do here on 5.9 Gaming Direct. And leave us a like if you enjoy this video, leave a comment letting us know the game you're most excited for. And if you don't like this video, leave a dislike and leave a comment letting us know what we could do better next time. We're gonna go right down the list on the PlayStation blog post that was released. We'll have a link to that in the comments down below. But we're gonna start off with a heavy hitter, GTA Vice City, the definitive edition this is a remake that was released a few months ago to some backlash as there were all sorts of bugs, glitches, and especially visual issues with the game. Considering it's supposed to be the definitive edition, I don't think this was okay, but from what I understand, Rockstar has put out several patches since the release of these games, and hopefully this is going to be a worthwhile pickup for anyone who enjoyed the original Vice City. I know back in the day, I personally put hundreds and hundreds of hours into GTA Vice City, and it was always a good time. Personally, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this one again after so many years. I really haven't played GTA too much. I played a little bit of 4. haven't even touched 5, believe it or not, but hopefully the issues are fixed, and this classic will be something for you to add to your playstation library and have hours and hours of fun with and next up we've got dragon quest 11 s echoes of an elusive age the definitive edition this is a ps4 game dragon quest is a jrpg series that has been going on for decades at this point one of the more popular jrpg series outside of final fantasy and this one looks no different description reads explore a massive world as you embark upon an epic rpg adventure as the luminary the chosen one in a world of vows to hunt him down the luminary and his unique band of loyal companions work together to survive an onslaught of ne'er-do-wells and overthrow the dark forces that plot to plunge the world of Adrea into chaos. This game looks like a standard JRPG turn-based just like the old school Final Fantasy. One of the things that I absolutely love doing some research into this game is that it has a 2D retro mode that really takes me back to the days of like Sega Genesis and SNES RPGs. Dragon Quest is a beloved series even though I haven't really checked it out I might actually get to checking this one out as it is on PS Plus but one thing you can be sure about as this is a JRPG you're going to be able to spend countless hours in this game just farming up your characters, your abilities, and your weapons. And next on the list is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is one of the newer Assassin's Creed titles. A lot of people feel like these games are a great departure from the old school Assassin's Creed series. They love the RPG aspects, but then you see a lot of fans of the old school games saying these don't really feel like Assassin's Creed games anymore. However, if you played the old school Assassin's Creed games and you haven't tried these out yet, I suggest at least giving them a try. They may be something that refreshes your love for the series like it has for some of my friends. Description reads write your own legendary odyssey and live an epic adventure in a world where every choice matters sentenced to death by your family embark on a journey from outcast mercenary to legendary greek hero and uncover the truth about your past customize your equipment and master new special abilities tailoring your character's skill set to your play style Fight your way across Greece, engaging in visceral battles both on land and sea to become a legend. This game does run at 60 FPS on PS5, so if you're lucky enough to have snagged a PS5 already, and this is something you've been looking to try out, you're gonna get the best possible experience. I know Odyssey is the most highly regarded, at least from what I've heard, of these newer Assassin's Creed titles. A lot of people absolutely loving the setting and the new characters. So if you've been waiting, there's no better time to check it out. After that, we get Dragon Quest Builders. Now, for what I can tell, this looks like Dragon Quest mixed with Minecraft, and that seems like an interesting idea. This is something I might download and check out, at least while it's on PS Plus. We see it listed as gather materials, craft items, and build everything imaginable as you explore a sandbox world made of blocks and packed with memorable characters and dangerous monsters. Use the power of creation in battle against the reigning dragon lord and restore peace to the shattered realm. This does appear to be more of an action sandbox RPG than the traditional Dragon Quest turn-based RPG, but if that's something you're interested in, this is going to be something for you to download on PS Plus Extra. And along with Dragon Quest Builders is the sequel Dragon Quest Builders 2. This one is even more of the sandbox action. Apparently the first one was good enough to warrant a sequel, and this one has up to four player multiplayer. So if you and your friends have PS Plus extra want to hop in and get on some team building together that is something you can go for in dragon quest builders 2 again another sandbox action rpg with a single player campaign but that multiplayer spin does make for some interesting possibilities in terms of gameplay and replayability looking up reviews i've seen almost nothing but good things about dragon quest builders 2 so both of these games are probably going to be something you want to check out if you seem intrigued at all now if dragon quest does 
pique your interest but doesn't quite tickle your fancy, there's also Dragon Quest Heroes, and this is an all new action RPG adventure. In the peaceful kingdom of Arba, man and monster live side by side, but when monsters suddenly snap and go on the rampage, it's up to our heroes to fight back against wave after wave of their former friends. As either the hero Lucius or the heroine Aurora, players must join forces with a cast of fan favorites from previous Dragon Quest titles to bring the rampaging hordes of monsters to their senses and restore order to the kingdom. Dragon Quest Heroes The World Trees Woe and The Blight Below is an action RPG, so that means if you're into more of something like Kingdom Hearts, this might be right up your alley if you want to check out a Dragon Quest game, but those JRPG old school turn-based rules are a little too slow paced for you. We also see Dragon Quest Heroes 2 Explorers Edition coming. This hack and slash field roaming action RPG sends players on adventures to restore peace to the once peaceful world filled with monsters and battles of epic proportions. Featuring a cast of playable characters, each with unique moves and abilities, including a host of familiar faces from the Dragon Quest series and four brand new heroes. Up to four players can band together in cooperative multiplayer to conquer swarms of enemies and defeat challenging boss monsters. So that's more of the Dragon Quest heroes. If you enjoyed the first one, maybe check out the second one. But one of the things I like about both of these last two Dragon Quest sequels that we covered is that they are opening up to multiplayer and games are always better with friends. So if you do have friends who are interested in this, check this out with them as well. Coming up next, we get Inside. Inside is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. Hunted and alone, a boy finds himself drawn into the center of a dark project. This dark, narrative-driven platformer combines intense action with challenging puzzles. It has been critically acclaimed for its moody art style, ambient soundtrack, and unsettling atmosphere. And I will say this game is absolutely unsettling. I love this game when I played through it the first time, and every once in a while, I'll just play through it. It only takes a few hours, especially if you play through it more than once it'll take you maybe two hours to go through a run even if you're a little out of practice but inside is definitely one of those ones you're gonna want to check out it's perfect for a spooky season right it's halloween coming up and this game is definitely kind of a quasi horror weird dark gross game it's a 2d slash 2.5d platformer that really does a great job with its puzzles and an exceptional job with visual storytelling this is a lot like the game limbo if you remember that from back in the ps3 xbox 360 era and it's made by developers play dead the same ones who made limbo following up on that we get the medium this is a ps5 exclusive title that started off as an xbox exclusive when it was first released but made its way over to the ps5 eventually it is a ps5 exclusive because it is very technical demanding our very own platinum chin streamed this game a little bit when it came out on the 5.9 twitch channel and it was doing a number on his computer when he had a 2080 and a ryzen 3600 i believe but going through this third person psychological horror game features innovative dual reality gameplay explore the real world and the spirit world at the same time use your psychic abilities to solve puzzles spanning both worlds uncover deeply disturbing secrets and survive encounters with the maw a monster born from an unspeakable tragedy this game was very innovative with its gameplay and design choices however from what i've heard the technical limitations of most consoles still cause this game to struggle so if you want to check it out definitely do so but keep in mind it may have frame rate drops and things like that as it is effectively loading two games at once at almost all times throughout the entire game that being said it got decent reviews and from people who've actually finished it that i've talked to they say it's pretty good so if you want to check that out it's going to be for ps5 users only. And next on the list, we have Naruto to Baruto Shinobi Striker. Multiplayer competitive combat is the name of the game as two teams of four face off on the battlefield to prove who the best group of ninjas are. Build a four player team selecting from fan favorite Naruto characters and go online to join up with friends to compete against other teams for eight way ninja clashes this looks kind of cool in my opinion i've never really gotten into naruto or anything but the fact that there are four different classes right there's an attack type a range type a defense type and a healer uh that seems pretty cool and looking at some footage getting to see that there are big open arenas that you can take advantage of i think is very nice because usually if you get some kind of thing like this you're gonna have kind of small arenas where everyone's forced together at all times but having that large space is gonna allow for your range type to really do do the work that they're intended to do instead of just kind of sitting a few feet back from the rest of the party if you're looking for four player ninja combat and you've got some teams who might want to play this check this one out but remember that it does look like it's exclusively online so take that for what you will 
Next up, we get the side-scrolling 2.5D Assassin's Creed Chronicles games. There's going to be Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India, and Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. All three of these games have gotten middling to decent reviews from every outlet I've seen. I've never really heard anyone talk about them. They sure look interesting if you're into the 2D kind of stealth gameplay that they offer. If you're a real hardcore fan of Assassin's Creed and you maybe want to try and get some lore from these games or something like that, I guess you could play through them for that. Otherwise, if you're looking for an Assassin's Creed experience, there are definitely better games on this list this month that are going to do just that for you. Speaking of, up next is Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, the PS4 remaster of Assassin's Creed 3. This is going to make my brother, the Platinum Chin, so happy. He was just talking about how he had hoped that Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered came with the big dump of Assassin's Creed games that we got a month or two ago. And we talked about how it was likely going to happen at some point because Assassin's Creed 3 is a really strong title in the franchise. I absolutely love this game when it came out. It was my favorite until Black Flag came out, which that game has remained my favorite Assassin's Creed to this day. But one of the really special things about Assassin's Creed 3 is that it features the American Revolution period. And I think that's really interesting time in history, especially being an American, you learn about it in school. But this does have a lot of the stuff that you're never taught about in the romanticized version of the revolutionary period that we learn here. And so I thought that offered some cool insight to a period of time we'd always been taught about one way. Assassin's Creed 3 does feature the really cool feature of Tree Running 2, which was brought back in later titles but this one introduced it as well as the ship battles, which I thought was fantastic. Description reads, relive the American Revolution in Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered with enhanced graphics and improved gameplay mechanics. Plus, Assassin's Creed Liberation Remastered and all solo DLC content are included. 1775, the American colonies are about to revolt. As Connor, a Native American assassin, secure liberty for your people and your nation. From bustling city streets to chaotic battlefields, assassinate your foes in a variety of deadly ways with a vast array of weaponry. And following up from that, we do see that Assassin's Creed Syndicate is also coming. Syndicate is the last quote unquote true Assassin's Creed game according to many people that were fans of the franchise from the original games. And it was after this one kind of got a middling reception that Ubisoft decided to try something different with the franchise and that led us to getting Origins, Odyssey, and now Valhalla. But this one is pretty cool. London, 1868, in the heart of the Industrial Revolution, play as Jacob or Evie Fry, brash and rebellious young twin assassins, and lead your underworld organization and grow your influence to fight those who exploit the less privileged in the name of progress. Another really interesting point in history, the Industrial Revolution in England is going to be a great place if you've never played this game for you to explore if you are someone who enjoys learning about history in a way that's not really traditional. One of the things that I always thought was really admirable about the Assassin's Creed games is that they did a lot of research into not only how the world looked at the time, but what was actually going on behind the scenes. Again, giving a lot of people a non-romanticized version of some of the events that were happening in the world around that time and how some of the people were in real life. One of the things to keep in mind for this is that it is PS4 only. So unfortunately, you PS5 players won't be able to get your hands on Syndicate, which I think is a major bummer because what's the point of upgrading if you're going to be limited to stuff off of extra but that's neither here nor there and finally we have hohokam this is a cute little kind of kite puzzle game where you're allowed to freely explore at your own will and see what you can discover this game has a really great art style and it's really just a chill vibe game you kind of sit back control the little kite flying thing and you see what happens as you explore so if you're looking for something to just kind of chill out with hohokam might be right up your alley and now moving on to the PlayStation Plus premium classics that are being put out. We get this sort of controversial move by Sony Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 Remastered. This is somewhat controversial among Sony fans because they released some of the older Yakuza games recently on the extra tier. And we were also told that PS4 games were going to go on extra and PS3 and Vita games were going to be the ones reserved for the premium tier. But now with these, we're seeing them added into the premium tier exclusively. So that's something that's kind of sketchy on Sony's part. And I'm hoping they don't continue this trend, but it looks like they might be doing just that because aside from Yakuza 3, 4, and 5, we also see Limbo, which is from Play Dead and is the thing that put Play Dead on the map before they put out Inside. 
Limbo is a great 2D platformer, very creepy ambiance in this game. This is a classic. I remember playing this way back on the Xbox 360 back in the day. I think I've purchased this game maybe five or six times on separate platforms since. The tagline of the game is uncertain of his sister's fate. A boy enters Limbo. And this game really is kind of surreal and creepy. This is definitely what I would recommend you play. However, I would wait because you'll generally see this game go on sale for three to five bucks at most on Steam, on PlayStation Store and stuff like that. So if you really wanna check this one out, if you play inside, if you're only on the extra tier, you play inside and you enjoy it and you wanna check out Limbo, wait for that sale, especially with Halloween coming right around the corner. They're very likely to have a sale on this game in the near future for a couple bucks. So I would wait on that. Then we get Ultra Street Fighter 4. It's another PS4 game. And this one has a hulking roster of 44 warriors, including some classics such as Ken, Ryu, and Blanca. And for you fighting game fans, this is gonna be a real good one for you to pick up. It had decent reviews, but hey, it's on premium and you get to play it basically with your subscription at no extra charge. So you might as well grab it, play it with some friends. Then we get Castlevania Lords of Shadow. This third person action adventure is a dark and vivid reimagining of the Castlevania mythology that sees the Holy Knight Gabriel Belmont strike out to battle the evil forces of darkness in revenge for the death of his beloved wife. This game has an absolutely gorgeous art style. However, if you are a fan of Castlevania, don't go in expecting it to be like older Castlevania titles. It kind of loses all of the Metroidvania style backtracking and exploring for secrets and things like that. However, on the upside, this game does feature Sir Patrick Stewart, a guy that everybody absolutely adores. And the art style alone of this game might be a selling point for some people. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So make sure you check this one out if you are into kind of hack and slash action adventure games, especially if you like those with the gothic setting. And finally, we end with Everyday Shooter. Everyday Shooter is an album of games exploring the expressive power of abstract shooters. Play through different levels, each with a completely different, unique musical, graphical, and gameplay style. Shoot to trigger musical sounds and riffs that combine to form the final soundscape of the game. Use points earned in the game to unlock extra lives, shuffle mode, and different visual filters. This one looks kind of cool if you're into the old school, kind of like top down arcade style shooters. And if you are, definitely look forward to checking that one out on PS Plus Premium. So that's going to wrap up our entire list for the month of October. We should be getting these games within the next week or so. And I know personally, I'm excited to have more old school Assassin's Creed to play, as well as checking out that Vice City and those Dragon Quest games. And who knows, I might even check out the medium because it's spooky season but what game are you most excited for let us know in the comments down below and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video dislike if you did not enjoy it and let us know down in the comments what we could do better next time i'm little bobby here for 5.9 gaming direct and i want to thank you for watching today we hope to see you soon